What's a liquid sidechain? Asks David. David, looks like it's a private blockchain, but claim to be having some degree of decentralization. If it did work, what does it mean to Bitcoin community and other sidechain projects, either public or private? Um, so, first of all, Liquid is a product name, and it's a creation of a company called Blockstream, which is a company uh, that has a number of projects in the Bitcoin space, and also uh, hires and pays a number of core developers um, who are working on the Bitcoin Core protocol and the Bitcoin Core client. So, Blockstream uh, announced this. A long time ago, uh, probably three, two or three years ago, um, they are they have hired some of the developers who came up with the initial idea of a side chain. And a side chain is a separate blockchain that has a two way peg, uh, whereby you can move money from Bitcoin to this other blockchain, uh, use it in this other blockchain, and then move it back. Um, and this uses a uh, trustless two-way peg. Now, in the case of Liquid, the purpose of Liquid, which is the first sidechain implementation by Blockstream, and has been in, in beta stage or in trial stage for more than a year now, uh, Liquid is intended to be kind of like a back-end exchange-to-exchange um, pipeline for uh, for Bitcoin transfers, allowing Bitcoin to move very fluidly between exchanges without having on-chain transactions. So the idea being that you have exchanges around the world, and they uh, have to withdraw and deposit Bitcoin to addresses that belong to other exchanges. And every time they do a withdrawal or deposit, they're not only using up space on the Bitcoin blockchain, but they also have to pay fees uh, in order to do that. Liquid is intended to be essentially a payment channel between exchanges that allows them to move money between themselves directly. Uh, kind of like a SWIFT network for Bitcoin. Um, one of the uh, things about Liquid is that it uses a federated signing model. So it's not a mined uh, chain, instead it's a signed chain. So it uses kind of what some people call a proof of authority or a federated signing model, where there are um, some privileged nodes within the system that, um, that vet and uh, manage the consensus rules on that side chain, and they secure that blockchain by signing uh, blocks and taking turns signing blocks. So there is a degree of decentralization um, compared to a centralized provider like Swift, um, but there, there isn't the degree of decentralization you have in a completely decentralized and open blockchain that has a proof of work algorithm uh, behind it, for example. On the uh, liquid uh, sidechain, um, what you're actually moving around is liquid BTC, which is one-to-one -one equivalence of Bitcoin. So you lock up one Bitcoin on the Bitcoin blockchain, and then that becomes one uh, LBTC or liquid Bitcoin that can move on the liquid sidechain, um, presumably at faster speeds with lower transaction costs and without burdening um, the, the Bitcoin blockchain. And at any point in time, you can move one liquid Bitcoin back to one Bitcoin uh, at a one-to-one -one exchange rate. So that's the basic idea. This is not for end users. This is not for consumers, although ha there have been some discussions about opening it up to others. But this is something for exchanges to manage very large flows of Bitcoin between themselves uh, in a network that's off-chain. Um, and it's a commercial product. So uh, it has fees, but as far as I understand, the fees are uh, for the providers of the security on this system. Jerry asks, does the Bitcoin liquidity, uh, I think he means liquid, does the Bitcoin liquid sidechain com compete with uh, Ripple, XRP, for use case scenarios? Um, so does the liquid sidechain, which is the sidechain created by Blockstream, uh, compete with XRP for use cases? I don't think so. Um, and I think part of the reason for that is, from what I understand, XRP has a very different model um, in, in both its consensus layer 
as well as um, in how the currency is used within the network than liquid. And I think people who are interested in XRP are not interested in Bitcoin, even if it is implemented through something like a liquid sidechain. But there is kind of a spectrum of applications here, whether it is going from payment channels in a lightning network, um, or just raw payment channels and atomic swaps and things like that, uh, a side chain like liquidity or um, XRP. And there is some overlap in some of those applications. Um, I don't think that overlap is enough to really make these systems compete directly against each other. I think they differentiate enough that they don't directly compete. But we'll see. Do sidechains inherit any of the security properties of the main blockchain they are connected to, or are they completely independent? If not, how can we trust them? That's a great question, Frank. It depends on the implementation of the sidechain, but in many cases, a sidechain is, is simply another blockchain that has a way to transfer a value from, from another blockchain. So you have two blockchains that are operating in parallel, side by side, and it's you can't really say one is a side chain of the other any more than the other is a side chain of the first. Um, they're both side chains to each other, um, but they're both independent blockchains. You have mechanisms which involve uh, cross blockchain transfers, uh, forms of atomic swaps, pegging, um, and things like that, that allow you to move value from one to the other. But that doesn't uh, that doesn't mean they're not independent blockchains. And so then the question is, what are the consensus rules by which the blockchain is secured? So a sidechain is a blockchain, and it has some consensus rules. Maybe it runs with proof of work mining. Maybe it runs with proof of stake. Maybe it has a federated proof of authority signing mechanism. Whatever the case may be, it will have the security characteristics that these consensus mechanisms bring to it. If you took two um, proof-of-work blockchains with substantial hashing power behind them and made them side chains of each other, they'd have different characteristics than if you connect, say, um, a proof-of-work blockchain like Bitcoin with a lot of hashing power behind it and a side chain that has either a very small amount of mining or a different consensus mechanism. How can we trust them? You can trust them if you understand their security model and you think that security model is strong enough. Um, but they don't really inherit the security of the other chain. There are some exceptions to that, which have to do with merge mining, where both chains are mined together. But those exceptions don't change the rule. Why have side chains been overshadowed by other crypto projects like Ethereum for contracts and Polymath for security tokens? Well, but part of the reason is we haven't seen a successful uh, and um, popular implementation of sidechains. Really, sidechains are relatively recent technology. Um, many of the underlying requirements, although sidechains were proposed four years ago or five years ago, many of the underlying technology only recently has entered into the various blockchains in order to make sidechains uh, possible. Um, I think probably only. Two have launched so far that I know of, uh, Rootstock and uh, just this week, Liquid. Um, but other than that, we haven't really seen broad use, and both of those are still in beta stage. Um, so that's why sidechains are not yet, uh, or may never be, but they're not as popular as completely separate blockchains that have been bootstrapped with their own consensus layer and operate with their own security. Um, hope that answers your question, Tamara.